All right, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the lower eyelid and my philosophy on surgery. I like to repeat this with myself often because it teaches me uh, what I want to do when I do surgery. When I was in training year, years ago, I came up with this memory device, kind of a mnemonic, SMFTV. It stands for skin, muscle, fat, tone, and vector. Clearly, you want to be able to address any extra skin, and we can see that visually. If there's redundant or thickened muscle, again, we can see that visually. Uh, fat is the F. Tone is the eyelid tone, if there's laxity or not. This, this, there is laxity here. And vector is the prominence of the globe relative to the cheek. Her globe is not prominent here. You have to address all of those issues when you do surgery and come up with a plan to understand all those variables. Historically, surgery has been done through the skin. That's called transcutaneous surgery or open approach surgery or from inside the eyelid. From inside the eyelid is called transconjunctival surgery. Through the skin surgery was the mainstay for many, many years. <clears throat> Today, there's been a big shift over the last 20 years to doing it from inside the lid, because when you do it from the outside the lid, depending on what you read in the literature, there's a six to 20% incidence of the eyelid shape changing or pulling down. That does not mean it's a bad surgery, it just means the person who does it has to be very well versed in it. I tend to do surgery from the inside of the lid. I feel it's safer and yields better results in my hands. The lower eyelid is the area from the lashes to this orbital rim. Eye bags are prominent fat, and it could involve muscle and skin also. What we do with fat is either take it out, that's a subtractive procedure, or we reposition or transpose it to this depression underneath the eyelid. We call these periorbital hollows. If the fat comes forward, as it does here, the muscle at the level of the eyelid cheek interface can stick down here, more loosely here, and it can cause these depressions because the fat comes forward, the cheek falls, and the skin is very thin over here. So what I do is use this fat and I shift it into this area. That's called fat transposition or fat repositioning. That tends to do very, very well. The fat has its own blood supply. The other thing you can do to fill this area is take fat from a distant location, like the belly or the thigh via liposuction techniques, process the fat, and then inject it. The problem is that's a fat graft. It may or may not take. It could overtake, and we can form inflammatory reaction to it and get what I call LBCs, lumps, bumps, and contrary regularities. We've published on that. So I'm careful with fat grafting or fat transfer and only use it should I not be able to reposition fat. So in this case, we will take the fat from inside the lid, make flaps out of it, dissect deeply over bone and transpose the fat into this area to make the lower eyelid and cheek interface a smooth surface. I hope that helps, have a great day.